I think I will uh, start my presentation. I, I thought maybe uh, to um, address uh, not only what we have been doing and what are the national responses, but as well uh, part of the aim of this workshop is to work together uh, and explore how healthcare uh, moves forward post pandemic. So it will be a mix between presenting what we have with regard to the COVID response and as well MERS and uh, some future approaches. So uh, 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 my next slide, I guess, um, I thought maybe uh, we would like to have a tra transformative um, approach towards this. I think digital and technology uh, plays a major role in, in, in leading forward. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Um, I think uh, looking at, at MERS in Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, we never had SARS as uh, other countries, but, uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, the part of, uh, of Corona that we had in 2012 uh, and still ongoing as sporadic cases, uh, luckily we have uh, nationally around 3,000 cases uh, so far. And uh, it is not something that uh, is more of a community. It's more of sporadic cases and uh, mostly affect uh, uh, when it goes through the emergency room with the lack of identification of cases. Uh, we have uh, outbreaks within, within healthcare institutions. And that was very obvious and very clear uh, characteristic of MERS that uh, when it goes, it's really affect uh, without identification, it affects healthcare and healthcare system and uh, sporadic. In 2015, we had uh, a major outbreak within our system where we had uh, around 170 cases, uh, 48 of them were from the healthcare worker were infected. And uh, luckily enough, we had a uh, good response and, and, and re re resolution of this. Since then, we had a major uh, input on identification of cases. It became part of the regular assessment when patients present with fever and respiratory symptoms. And um, many hospitals have, uh, you know, developed a drive-through approach where we can identify and screen for MERS uh, at the beginning and ensure that uh, they don't come in through the system, either in the outpatient clinic or in the inpatient clinic. And as I said, it becomes part of the routine of evaluating patients with respiratory symptoms. Uh, you know, as uh, Saudi Arabia is a major uh, center for Muslim, Muslim worlds, we are always worried over the years since 2012 that uh, um, outbreaks can occur within the religious times and with the religious gatherings that we have every year. And we're in thousands in localized places or in confined places. So we're able really to control this at the borders. We're able to make sure that the healthcare system really quite vigilant and try to monitor and isolate and of course protect uh, visitors to these places. As you know, having um, uh, similar uh, problems would, would, would cause uh, a major impact to the system. So since then, uh, there has been an, a major, major change in the national approach towards uh, infectious disease and, of course, uh, outbreaks and had uh, in input in preparation of the country for uh, uh, the recent pandemic uh, with uh, major national uh, command centers, uh, a major reporting system at the national level, and, of course, uh, uh, representative uh, from the different uh, uh, healthcare sectors that they are part of uh, the uh, command and response uh, system. So briefly here, I think uh, the slide shows that uh, COVID really has changed significantly. I think uh, all of us has talked about regional um, uh, experiences and regional outbreaks, but this is really quite an international uh, what happened with, with the COVID and, and, and really has uh, resulted in a major earthquake and affected, you know, not only the healthcare system, uh, the social and economy. So uh, next slide, uh, I think uh, healthcare system, I will just try to cover this a little bit, being, being a CEO of the healthcare system uh, that uh, really has to really burn the burnt of the, of the whole issue. 
And uh, creating a resilient system is very important. And we have seen from the previous presenters that this is all centers about how do we get prepared uh, at the level of the healthcare workers, at the level of um, preparation, readiness, uh, supply changes, and of course, uh, uh, an effective leadership. Uh, definitely uh, preparing the healthcare system is, is, is important. Uh, beginning of, of, um, of uh, COVID, you know, there has been a national uh, uh, approach to this with a big, big uh, representative at the national level in the command and control system where we have the medical representatives or the, the healthcare systems represented, all uh, e-services, governmental offices, uh, uh, of course, uh, the Saudi FDA and uh, uh, mun municipality authorities and uh, health travels, uh, sorry, travel authorities and many other uh, things. And of course, religious, um, religious issues. As I said, being uh, a center of the Muslims countries, uh, this is really a very, very important. And the country has taken a major step towards that. And I think preventing or... Um, trying to uh, prevent the uh, spread of uh, this uh, outbreak to, to different parts of the Muslim countries has been a major, major effort of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, luckily enough that when the outbreak comes, it was not in the midst of, uh, of uh, a major gathering. However, we had almost uh, 30 to 40,000 uh, uh, people who were visiting um, uh, the holy places, but uh, we were able to really make sure that they were all screened. They were able to make sure that their health is being taken care of. And every, whatever gradual travel of these people has been monitored effectively to make sure that as well, they were not there. So, so, so that, that was, that was a very, very major undertaken by the government and by the healthcare systems uh, to ensure that this is, uh, this is what happened. I think uh, my next part of the slide uh, will address uh, uh, that the similar responses that we have seen from our colleagues in the different parts of the countries. I think they're not they're not different, and I think uh, we're able to help that uh, we uh, protect healthcare system that being affected. Uh, we have a major uh, number of cases uh, nationally. Uh, we reached uh, around more than one hundred thousand cases. Uh, but luckily enough, our healthcare system has been well prepared, has been uh, well in advance of uh, uh, ensuring that uh, we're uh, ready with different uh, uh, protection for the healthcare workers and uh, availability of uh, PPEs, availability of ICU care, and uh, of course, uh, a necessary uh, a procedure to lead with, uh, with their care in the ICU. Uh, so I meant just to say here that as well, we felt that we want to integrate, uh, you know, leadership here with regard to technology and healthcare uh, provision. Uh, we developed a lot of work on many of our e-services to ensure that uh, technology innovation will help to ensure that we it is part of the uh, DNA of uh, the management uh, at, the, at our command center nationally that uh, uh, information sharing and flow of information between all healthcare sectors and uh, the preparation of testings and many of other things. Uh, the uh, across the board, the decision cycle, uh, come next slide please. Mm -hmm. Next one. Uh, I think uh, uh, that instantaneous decisions has been made and on a daily basis that uh, meeting are being done. And uh, so connectivity has really uh, helped a lot to uh, develop the national response uh, that uh, it is unbelievable how, uh, you know, people responded and how the uh, public, including um, the community work and uh, the NGOs and many other uh, services has really help to ensure that uh, uh, clearly that we do the, the national approach towards this uh, was, was quite remarkable through, uh, through major decisions and, and activities. Uh, I think, uh, next slide, to look at embracing technology 
uh, many of uh, healthcare system worked on telehealth and uh, this is really has brought telehealth more uh, forward has uh, improved clearly the delivery of cases particularly delivery of care particularly for non covid patients where we should not really forget and develop a major uh, healthcare crisis where uh, these people are not being taken care of and uh, to really the to the benefit of telehealth uh, uh, it is really now um, received uh, quite uh, an impressive uh, uh, response and uh, impressive uh, uh, development uh, over the last few months and uh, many healthcare services are doing this uh, in every part of the world so it is uh, it is it is truly an important things many digital public health approaches uh, as been mentioned uh, through technology uh, really developed the tracing and monitoring provided that we develop we continue to ensure that privacy and ethical approaches are being conducted uh, throughout travels, throughout tracing, throughout monitoring of patients with COVID. So again, uh, uh, luckily enough that uh, many of uh, the systems uh, has uh, ensured that uh, this is uh, enable our systems and healthcare that uh, that can can move ahead with this. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Asif was presenting how healthcare is is important, and uh, these are the people who really will take care of. Um, our patients in MERS uh, that we have seen that they were seriously affected. And since then, we never had, uh, since the first outbreak in 2012 and 2015, these are two major outbreaks, we never had uh, healthcare worker were affected. And that was a major, major goal and objective of many of, of healthcare organization to ensure that healthcare workers are protected. Uh, and with the, with the availability of PPEs and of course they protect themselves and protect the others and uh, working with the team ensuring that they are not burned out and this is really important and we have seen uh, a major uh, uh, emphasis on this uh, be not to burn out our healthcare workers because of the severity of this outbreak compared to others and and how serious uh, COVID compared to, uh, for example, MERS, as we have experience with. I think teamwork has been a very, very important uh, things for our um, uh, healthcare workers. Well-being is, is essential, and we have uh, uh, worked significantly in this, and we learned from MERS that as well having to be close to our uh, healthcare workers by different approaches, providing for them the well-being from uh, the social, uh, mental, and psychological uh, well-being is, is quite important. Keeping them uh, motivated, energized, and engaged, and of course appreciated is, is, quite, uh, is quite essential. And uh, we as healthcare workers and healthcare leadership, we should ensure that this is sustainable. It's not easy. Uh, I'm sorry, it is my next slide. I think it's not shown. It is not easy, but it is something that uh, we have to continue doing and we have to continue, uh, uh, we have to sustain this. Uh, truly, it is, it is a major effort and uh, luckily enough, we have uh, not uh, too many. We have between our system uh, that we have 0.2, 0.0%, uh, 2% of uh, people who are uh, got infected and the majority of these people were not through uh, through the system it was more of a community or they've been traveling and came back with the positive cases uh, I just want to, my next slide to show how important this is a recent survey that we have done that the staff will being is, is, is very important I think uh, there are lots of messages here that 32% uh, of our staff wanted to have extended leave. Uh, they really want to change careers, some of them, after this pandemic. 16% uh, uh, have some symptoms of post-traumatic uh, stress syndromes. 21% uh, have moderate to severe anxiety. 20% uh, were, were symptoms of uh, some depression. 
two uh, percent, uh, you know, sought help and uh, psychological support, support, and seven percent uh, requested actual, uh, you know, uh, psychological support. So clearly, clearly, it's a major burden on healthcare worker. Unless we sustain this, unless we work and develop measures and 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 ensure that uh, they are uh, they are supported, uh, uh, this can cause this. I say this because. We are, we are not yet uh, over this pandemic. And I think we see surges every now and then occurring and cases are, 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 uh, are popping up and, and some localized uh, areas and uh, the, the number of cases still ongoing. And I think we're not yet out and uh, definitely without a vaccine, as everyone knows, we will not be able to say that this is going to go away soon. Uh, making sure that healthcare, as as we manage healthcare, uh, from a leadership point of view, uh, continue to be able to sustain and ensure that we deliver the practice of our patients, and uh, we 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 have to uh, ensure that um, we maintain uh, an important workforce that will show this not only focusing on PPEs, but I, I think focusing in staff well-being uh, is, is, is quite important and essential. Uh, um, I take this as, as something that is an important message. Uh, without uh, ensuring that this has happened, we will continue to uh, really work together to ensure that the public approach and uh, continue to uh, ensure that uh, uh, delivery of care will will be at the best standards. Uh, uh, we hope that we will publish this, and I am not. I'm, I'm sorry that I have not uh, made some classification to this. Whether these people are in ICUs or in general wards or, or in primary care, but hopefully that we can develop some of these data soon. Thank you.